tonight? Carter. Any other changes to the lineup? No. You talked about wanting to uh, to stick with the, uh, the 7D, at least for now. Mm -hmm. um, is that something that you, you do think might be a regular thing, especially as you try to give Owen Tippett more and more responsibilities? For, for right now, yes. And it's not just Tip, but there's a couple other people that, um, you know, I, I talk about evaluating. I want to give everybody an, an, a chance to play as much as they can in these games to evaluate. So Tip's kind of running with it right now, and I, I, I don't think I can take it away from him. Uh, but there's a couple other people that uh, maybe get them some extra ice time to give them a fair look. With regards to Tippett, there's a lot of talk, rightfully, about you guys needing high-end talent. You know, Travis Konechny, when he's at his best, can be that guy. Mm -hmm. Do you think that Tippett has a ceiling of being a, a top-tier player? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I just like the progression that he's gone through. What, what he becomes, I'm not making any prediction. Uh, uh, I, there's more there. I, th I think more importantly, I think he thinks there's more there. The, the part of the game that I want to see, I'm going to really focus on with him this next month or so of our season is the power part of it too. I, I, I want him to be, uh, I want him bringing pucks to the net. I want him, as he's been doing, taking people on, trying to beat, beat people one-on-one. -on -one. Um, that's, I, I don't want to make a judgment of what he's going to be so I want to see the power part of it. Uh, is he going to be a guy that sits on the outside and relies on that shot? Or is he going to bring another dimension to where they have to, he's going to be a handful bringing the puck to the net. So we'll see where it goes. You mentioned that he has been doing it. What more are you looking to see from him in terms of the, the power game? Just that. I, 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 I want to, uh, I, I, I think he's really good at changing the angle of his shot. Uh, he scored a couple of goals through people, one in Montreal. I think there was one about a week later where he, he shot it through to the defenseman. I, I want to see him uh, stick his leg out occasionally and bring things to the paint. And uh, I, I haven't seen a lot of that. I think he's had opportunities to do that. Uh, so I think that's the, the next progression. Uh, the biggest thing, I want to get out of his way. Uh, I'll, I'll bring up a couple of thoughts, but then I just want him to play. And I want him to, to kind of play with uh, some other parts of his game and see where it goes. Is there any extent to which he could be an example for some of the other guys you're trying to get going, or is it more of an individual thing? No, I, I, I think we're looking for offense, right? And uh, um, I think other guys can watch him play uh, and and. Uh, find different things to do with it. Uh, uh, I, I liked, uh, I thought Frosty made some plays the last game. Uh, uh, I think Frosty's playing more in the areas that I'd like to see him play in the traffic areas and make plays. He certainly can learn from him. Different type of player. Yeah. Uh, you know, I want Frosty more of a distributor too. Uh, but I think anybody that's bringing offense in a team that's starving for it, and players that think they can be offensive people can watch and watch other guys. So I, I think it all helps that way. Going back to Tippett for a second, you've mentioned over the last couple of days that you know, he's a quiet kid. He's mm -hmm. got that personality. And that's something that you know when I've talked to people that he's grown up around the game with, they've said that, that, that mm -hmm. he's a quiet kid. Sometimes he can lack for confidence. But as a coach, when you're dealing with a player who has that personality, what do you have to you know change or at least adjust to make sure you're developing someone like that the right way? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think a big part of coaching is, and not just with Tip and a quiet guy, um, you know, we can pound our chest and, and go after people because maybe at the end of the day you got it off your chest as a coach. I think you got to be really careful. It's really not about you. It's about trying to get the best and trying to get a player as, as well motivated as you can. And it's, and it's different types. It's different types of, uh, of things you have to do. So. Uh, th that's something um, I think it's very important for a coach. I, I remember early in my career, it was, I didn't pay too much attention to that. And uh, I think coaches, I think we have, I think all of us have evolved and, and personalities are different with players. And it's, it's kind of a, a combination of doing it together. Uh, I think that's really important, especially dealing with a young team. 
So with Tip, I, I think Tip, uh, I've gone both ways. I've gone a number of different ways with Tip, and he's responded. Uh, uh, but other players, you may hurt him. Uh, I, I guess that's why I'll answer the question. It's not about what I want to do. It's what I think is best for the team or, or for that player for the team. And that's where you've got to uh, uh, be really careful sometimes. And I've made mistakes all through my career that way in just reacting and not understanding that I just hurt him, but I feel good. I get it off my chest. Uh, biggest thing is the player. Is that, does that answer? Yeah, OK. You mentioned that you just want to let him play. I know you've said that kind of about Travis connecting you to in the past and not like micromanaging mm -hmm. too much. Mm -hmm. How do you balance that or, or figure, navigate that, whether you're just whether you're pulling back and not it, telling them too it, much? It depends, it's a, it depends on the situation. It depends on how the player is playing. Uh, it depends on what's going wrong with his game and do I see, is he trying, we've told you we've got to go this way a little bit, whatever the situation may be, is, there, is he just staying down that road? My, I'm a guidance counselor, that's what I am. You need to try to guide him down the right road for success for him so our team can be successful no matter who the player is, a defensive player, offensive player, whatever it may be. That's 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 something I, I look for, and if you if you feel uh, if you feel the player isn't listening, then instead of getting out of the way, you might have to be in the way uh, to make sure he understands. Once he understands, I, I do. I think we overcoach. I think you need to leave it alone and let him experience it. And uh, that's the decision I have to make. Did he understand what I said? And if you think he did, then leave him alone and let him figure it out. I think you learn more by making some mistakes and taking some thoughts and trying to correct it. But if you don't see him even thinking about trying to correct, that's when you have to step in. Going back to more of an, a higher level about the games, we talked on, on Sunday about how against Detroit they played much more of the defensive mentality that mm -hmm. you want them to play given the limitations of the roster right now. Going into the games this week, not saying anything negative about Detroit, but these are teams with a lot of firepower. Yes. Is this really the test to see if yeah. they've, they've bought in? Yeah, and, and for me, it, 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 it's, it's the game management. It's like I told you, it's, it's, it's situational play in the neutral zone, uh, making sure you're turning the D and they're coming 200 feet. Uh, the puck battles, uh, uh, not throwing. There's so many things that come into play against teams like this because they, they just gather the puck and get going offensively. We can't even throw it into areas on blind passes because uh, they'll get they'll gobble it up and go the other way. You know, we, we, we got a team here that's lost five or six in a row, get spanked in Carolina. They're coming tonight. Um, I think we, we we have we have got to handle ourselves, and I think it's I, I, I think it's the especially this week. Well, even when we got Vegas coming in after that, it's a really good area to teach. How we want to play as we it, once we start becoming even a better team in managing games. I, I, we're going to really, really focus on managing how we play the games, managing your shift, uh, the front end of your shift, the back end of your shift, playing tired. Uh, we've talked about as a coaching staff. We're going to really concentrate on that because we, you know, losing TK is it's a huge hole for us as far as all the things he did for this team. Uh, it's only one player. But it's a huge hole. So now we got to play as a team. And I, I think this is how we're going to try to go about it here the next few weeks. And I think it will help us in the future. You talked about the strong play of Morgan and Owen in the last game. How did Watching the game back, how did Joel fit into that equation? Well, well he, the, the biggest thing with Joel, he was noticeable. you know. And I watched the tape, and I could see why he was noticeable. I, I think he had probably four or five chances. A couple dozen, they don't get to the net. Uh, has a breakaway. Uh, I thought made some plays. Um, I'm hoping uh, now that he, he ended up feeling it a little bit offensively, I'm anxious to see him here play tonight. Maybe he scores a goal. That, that's the next step for me for Joel, is he needs to he needs to have something happen for him to score a goal. And, and we can complain about his offensive play and and then look at his last game. He ends up with chances. He's not going to be happy until he scores a goal. And that's you guys see it all the time. You score even an empty netter. Uh, it just releases you. So I think that's the next step for Joel. Thanks.